Hey everybody, Blackacre here. Um, wow, I hope everyone is doing well out there and uh, are staying warm. If you're on the East Coast, it's quite a cold Memorial Day weekend over here. Um, but I hope you're enjoying your long weekend if you have one. Um, yeah, so we're going to tackle purity today. Figured I'd spend this nice gloomy Sunday with some incense and a slipknot lesson for you all. I haven't done one in a while. And, um, yeah, I'm going to do this one and then Eeyore, and then I'm going to be done doing lessons on the channel. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to do private lessons or a Patreon or something, but this is just, to be honest, just to be completely transparent, uh, it's just too much. Um, it takes too much time to do these, and yeah, anyway, figure that out when I get to it, but uh, just going to focus on the the covers. But um, yeah, so here's how to play Purity. I promised this one, I promised Eeyore. I'm going to do them. So uh, let's get into it. Uh, drum intro. First thing that Jim plays is this. So that's going to... There's really not that many parts in this song. That riff that I just played is going to come back a lot. So once you know how to play this, you know how to play a decent amount of the song. So that's going to be open, three... On the this is all on the low six string. Open three, open one, two opens, and then one open. It's kind of it's honestly harder to explain than it is to play. I'll just play it slow. And then the last time, when it does open three, open, open, you're gonna grab the second fret and crank that up. I feel like that's a common misconception with tabs I see or covers, um, is that they're playing like, you know, one of these types of bends. But they just crank the second string. I feel like they do that a lot. Same thing with, uh, is it Eyeless? Like a, they they do bends that are way easier if you do it up here. But anyway, so you're gonna take that second fret, six low six string and crank that up. Um, yeah, so that's that riff. Um, again, up to speed. And then it opens up. It's going to be the same riff. It's just um, you're not going to excuse me, palm mute as much. And you have to listen, but eventually it goes into power chords. So you're just going to obviously use the first two strings instead of just one. Excuse me, the bottom two strings on the top two. Um, and then eventually, the last time, you also crank that second string. Ah, oh, sorry. And you let that come down slowly, and then it goes into um, the first verse. And uh, so, uh, in my cover, how I got the uh, pseudo... Um, feedback was by doing what I just did. So basically what I'm doing is hitting the second string on the fifth fret harmonic and then rolling in the volume. Um, I believe one guitar I did the second string and one the fifth string because that's what I heard at least the feedback in the recording. Again, you know, it's just extra stuff that I did. Um, you don't have to do that, but, um, yeah. Oh, and by the way, I'm going to do my little self-titled spiel, but this is, I'm in drop B. I'd recommend practicing with, um, the 9.0 live version since they're just in normal drop B, but on the recording again, they tune a little sharp. So just a heads up to play with the recording. You're going to have to tune up a little bit. Um, but I'm just in straight up 440 drop B. So, 
where were we? Okay, first verse, and this is for all the verses. Mick's going to start it, and then Jim comes in with that second fret low six string. And you're going to, it's like, not an exact science here, but you're going to crank it up and then bring it back down. All right. Um, and that's pretty much it. It goes back and forth. Mick does his thing, and then... And then you're gonna... I always roll my volume off, and then... Alright. Um, live, they will end it. But on the recording, it's silence. I kind of like that. The open uh, B to go into the chorus. Or, sorry, not the chorus, the pre-chorus. So again, the pre-chorus is just going to be the, um... Um, that riff. So what I do is, the first time is just, um, single note. And then the second time is, uh, the, the power chords. So, um, that's going to sound like this, so... It's gonna do that pretty much everything I just showed you uh, for the verse again and then that pre-chorus um, so the chorus this is another one that I feel like it's um, overlooked so it's gonna be four to five to four like a quick um, slide back and forth so this is all in the low two strings right now so four to five to four and then open to hits on the low six string and then seven I'm gonna slide up so slow and how many times you hit that I think you know I think it might be like two or three I mean, you can do whatever you want. Um, this is just me nerding out a little bit. but And then what I do, Jim Live, he likes to do these um, like fifth harmonies where he'll drop down and do the octaves. So I think in the recording on my cover, the like first two times I do the power chords, the second two times I do the um, octaves. And that is going to be the same exact thing. You're just going to hop down to the fifth and third strings. So it's going to be the fourth fret fifth string and then sixth fret third string just these octaves and it's gonna go four five four uh fret wise and then the open again then you're gonna slide to seven that octave as well so um slow And then next part, another thing that I feel like gets uh, overlooked is I feel like I've seen a lot of, um, you know, tabs of this song and covers where it's just, um, but, uh, something that Jim likes to do, I've noticed, um, I believe he does this in sick, maybe I forget I'm sure there's multiple examples, but what he'll do instead of like an octave, he'll do an octave and a half step. So it sounds really gnarly, really like panicky because they're a half step. I mean, it's an octave and a half step apart, but the notes are like one half step from each other as far as like, but a different octave. So it sounds really gnarly. Like I said, kind of panicky and jittery. So um, what that is, is you're going to do uh, the 6th fret of the 5th string and the ninth fret of the 3rd string. And you're just going to move that down and back up a fret. So it sounds like this, slow. And 
what I'm doing there also is when I slide down, I hit just the fifth string on the fifth fret once. At the end, you're gonna um, slide up. I just do like a uh, slide on the low sixth string and then do his that harmonic pick slide thing. I don't know what it's called, but you know what it is. And uh, on the G string, up the neck, and then uh, Mick's gonna start the one to four, and then Jim comes in and it's gonna do like a, I forget exactly what it is, but it, you'll hear it on the record, um, you know, pick, uh, scraping type thing. And, uh, and then it's, uh, so hammer on one to four on the low six string, and then two opens, and then one four. That's just repeats. All right, and then it goes into another chorus, which I already showed. And the ending, um, it goes back into the, the uh, this row. But you're gonna at the very end you're gonna interrupt it with a big slide up. So it's gonna be like that type of thing. Obviously it's not again, it's not an exact science, but what you're gonna do is interrupt that uh, riff. When you go to this three, you're gonna hit open and then slide up that type of deal all right that's it um hope you guys enjoyed this lesson again um i'm gonna be back with a uh, uh eeyore lesson and then i'm gonna figure out where i'm gonna move the lessons here on out but uh like i said just it's too much for me to do um i want to focus on the covers and give you guys the best slipknot covers that i can so uh yeah hope everyone is well healthy safe and uh I will see you guys soon.